Good morning. You are listening to Upreach, a morning devotional presented by the Church Street Church of Christ in Lewisburg, Tennessee, to encourage you as you face the opportunities and challenges of today. The Church Street Church of Christ has recently hired Russell Wyatt to be the new involvement minister. So, I am using my Upreach program this week to simply have a casual conversation with Russell so that we might all get to know him on a more personal level. Okay, first of all, Russell, I want to say thank you for joining me today, and we want to have an opportunity to get to know you on a little bit more personal level. So, why don't you just start by telling us whatever you want to tell us about Russell Wyatt. We had to start really vague. <laughs> um, I, uh, I've been in ministry for many years. Uh, I started almost 14 years ago in professional ministry. I graduated in 2008 from Freed Hardman University and uh, went into youth ministry and then went into pulpit preaching about seven years ago. And now I'm here at Church Street working in the involvement role. Okay, tell us a little bit about your background. Tell us about your early life, where you grew up, maybe something about your family. I was born and raised in Modesto, California. Uh, my grandparents, uh, they kind of migrated out there originally from Oklahoma area on my mom's side, and I'm not exactly sure even where or when on my dad's side. Uh, but my mom's side was the side that uh, was, uh, I guess, church related to me. Uh, grandma on my dad's side, not as much, uh, but uh, we all were a pretty big type family out there. When I was growing up, my grandma Father, he was a preacher and an elder, and uh, he worked with the Hispanic uh, Hispanics in our area, out there in California, and uh, also um, really encouraged me in my early faith. I think in order to become a preacher, he uh, he had a big impact on my life, and is part of the reason why I'm here today. So, was your family regular churchgoers when you were a child? Yeah, for the most part, off and on, my, my parents' faith, I think, grew a lot during my teenage years. We had some things that had happened in my life, and uh, that really changed our family dynamic, and, and our church going became much more regular around that time. And it was about that time that I started to mature in my own faith uh, much more deeply and uh, you know made some big decisions, including one, to go into the ministry. So I decided to go to Freed Hardman because, quite honestly, I wasn't sure if I was going to be good at it, and I wanted a college degree to fall back on. You mentioned that your grandfather was an early influence for you decide, deciding to become a preacher. In what ways specifically do you remember having been impacted by him? My grandfather had a big library in his den, and I just remember going up there and seeing all the books and just being wowed by like the massive amount of information there. And so I would pick through those books. Most of them were religious and orient, and uh, I would pick his brain about things. And the fact that he could just answer every little tiny question that I had was always impressive to me. And uh, you know, I looked up to him for that. I wanted to be like him. And so in wanting to be like him, I think it was a, a huge motivator into kind of learning more, just wanting to learn every little thing that I could and absorb all the information that I could. And I had a lot of, you know, Know, catching up to do uh, so uh, to be up to his par and so I just constantly work toward that so I think it was probably the, the role model aspect and also maybe just a natural natural similar interests you know in life was he a preacher yeah he preached uh, mostly he preached to the Hispanics he was fluent in Spanish uh, he had learned that many years before and uh, so he preached there but he also preached uh, to our congregation from time to time but he played most of his role in that part of the congregation as an elder I'm joined once again today by Russell Wyatt, the involvement minister at the Church Street Church of Christ. And Russell, we've been spending some time together talking about your background. And so we talked a little bit yesterday about your family and your upbringing in California. Today, I want to kind of go back to your past a little bit and ask you on a more spiritual level to describe that point or that phase in your life where God became real to you in a very personal way that affected your choices that you were making in your life. Well, as I said yesterday, uh, we spent a lot of time with uh, spiritual things in our family growing up. I was brought up in the church, and uh, that was a big part of my life. I was baptized in junior high. High school is when my faith really, I think, got solidified. 
um, I made a big decision at one point uh, trying, you know, when you're a teenager, your, your relationships are so important to you. And I had a girlfriend. And at that time, I, it was not conducive to my spirituality. And after a few years, I broke up with her because I knew that it was going to interfere with my relationship in the future with God. And making that decision, I was emboldened to uh, make big decisions for God, try to figure out how I can serve God in his kingdom. And so I thought about my talents. I thought about the things that I could do to serve God in the kingdom. And I'm, you know, my mom, she used to call me Paul Harvey when I was a kid because I always had the rest of the story, she said. <laughs> And uh, I knew I could talk to anybody and anything. So I thought maybe preaching and ministry would be a good opportunity for me. My grandfather was involved in it, and I wanted to be involved in it as well. So I began to explore how to get into that. And I knew there were kind of two options. You go to preaching school or you go to university. And at the time, I, maybe I wasn't as optimistic about it. I was scared. So I... Uh, decided to go to university and get an education. That way, at least I had a college degree if I wasn't good at it. So I decided to go to Freed Hardman or Harding, and I was trying to decide between the two and ended up talking to the preacher at my congregation at the uh, encouragement of my grandfather, I believe it was. He had graduated from Freed Hardman, and I talked to my cousin who had gone to Harding, and I decided I would go to Freed Hardman so that I wouldn't disappoint myself by being rejected from being uh, allowed to join the football team at Harding. <laughs> So that's kind of how I got there. And that, that, that was at the point, I think, when my faith really grew and when God became real to me in the way that you ask. So when you went to Freed Hardman, you went there for the sole purpose of going into ministry, yes. studying Bible, and so on. I wasn't a freshman who came in and said, well, you know, we'll figure it out what I want to do. And I didn't change majors either. I came in with the idea of getting a Bachelor of Arts degree in Bible. And I know a lot of people who kind of wimped out at the Greek and... I wouldn't call myself a Greek scholar at all, but I decided definitely to continue down that BA route because I just thought it would be better and open more opportunities for me. Did you have to declare a minor with that degree? Yeah, I did. I, uh, I was a psychology minor. Okay. So you have a bachelor's degree in Bible mm -hmm. and a my, with a minor in psychology. Yes. So I, I know enough to be dangerous. <laughs> well, that's good preparation, obviously, for the ministry. So it looks like you made some good decisions there. And clearly, from what you've said already about your background, God is busy at work in your life from the time you're a very young man. Yes, and I believe he still is today. And, uh, you know, it's always those doors that open and shut that show you. It's easier to look back and see it than it is to always see it when it's right in front of your face. All right, I'm joined once again by Russell Wyatt. And, Russell, as we continue our conversation, we've learned some interesting things already about your past, your childhood, your introduction to God at a very early age in your life and your decision to go to Freed Hardeman to get your Bible degree. So today I want to turn things back a little bit toward your personal life and I'm interested in how you met your wife and what role do you think God played in, in bringing your paths together so that you would meet and eventually get married? Well, when you go to Freed Hardman, I think the joke is is that the uh, guys go there to get their Bible degree and the girls go there to get their MRS degree. Now, I know that's a little insulting, and I don't think it's true uh, at all. Um, but one of the things that I do think is true is that most people who go there are on the lookout. My freshman year, when I was there, uh, they had me look to the left and look to the right, like a lot of these Christian schools do, and they said, you're probably sitting next to someone you're going to marry. I was not. <laughs> <laughs> My freshman year, I was sitting uh, in a bunch of strangers, and they had us split up in that boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, which was interesting to me, but it was not a person who I would meet. I wouldn't meet Holly until actually my sophomore year. And I kind of struggled with the idea of not meeting someone that first year. I felt like everybody was getting snatched up, but I guess it was just right. You know, God was making me wait uh, up until the point that I would meet the right one. And I met Holly my sophomore year, and it was at Juno Church of Christ in Lexington, uh, Tennessee. I was teaching a, a class at the time for the college-age kids. We were rotating, and uh, that was the first time that I met her. Uh, she ended up actually having a boyfriend at the time, so I kind of stayed away as much <laughs> as I could. And eventually that relationship didn't work out, and I moved in rather quickly because I was very, very caught with her. She caught my eye, and I just I knew that she would be the one that I was interested in. And, then, you know, it was good relationship. God used that relationship to make me a better man. They always say behind 
any good man is a great woman. Mm -hmm. It's doubly true, I think, in my situation. If I'm good at all, uh, it is because of my wife. My wife uh, trimmed all the the harshness off around me that I needed to have for being a a minister and being a good man of God and made me a better individual. Uh, And I'm that because of her. And so she was there from, where did she grow up? Chapel Hill, Tennessee. So right down the road. Okay. So uh, I suppose she and her family were churchgoers all of her life as yes, well? Yes, uh, all her life, yeah. So she was going to Freed Hardeman and studying what? At the time when I met her, she was studying marketing, um, and she kind of realized that really wasn't what she wanted to do and swapped over to being a finance major. And now, actually, she works here in town for First Commerce. Okay. So she's actually one of those few people who's uh, using her degree in her professional life. (laughs) Yeah, probably. (laughs) It seems like a lot of college students change majors or end up in a professional life or a career that is not even remotely connected with what their degree in college was. Well, I can't say that uh, she didn't struggle, I think, at times with what she wanted to do, but she stuck with it and she actually used it. And, you know, it is impressive. Well, it's impressive to hear you uh, speak about the strength that she brings to your life because that always makes for a strong marriage when husbands and wives realize how much they need each other. And it's very clear from your conversation how, how sincerely you feel that about her. So appreciate you sharing that with us. And, and I hope that uh, our conversations are helping everybody that's listening get to know you a little bit better. So thank you for being with us again today. Okay, we're back once again with Russell Wyatt. And Russell, it's been a pleasure visiting with you throughout the week. And we've learned a lot about you. And I'm thankful that you've shared so much of your life with us. We've talked about your early life. We've talked about your early experiences with God and your decision at a very early age to become a minister. We've talked about your family and how you drifted from California all the way east to Tennessee to go to college at Freed Hardeman and the degree that you got there in Bible with a minor in psychology. We've talked about how you met your wife and the role that God has played all through your life in making all these things happen. So now as we fast forward into the present age, I'm curious to know what's going on in your life right now? Uh, What are some of the changes you're going through and what role do you think God is still playing in getting you to be who you are today? Yeah, it's it's. I think it's hard, as I've mentioned before, to kind of see exactly what God is doing right in the moment. I mean, sometimes you get those glimpses, but often I find personally that it's easier when you look back and you can see what God has done, how he has led you down the path that you're going. And if I had to look at what God is doing right now and why I'm here, I would have to look back and I'd have to say, you know, God has led me through each and every position that I've held or put me in different places at different times and opened doors and shut doors in my life to lead me exactly where I need to be. And I, I believe that. I believe that, that this, is, this is the place I need to be right now at Church Street. And I hope that I can have a great effect in the kingdom here. And I think that God has put people in my life and put me through different uh, situations to make me best equipped to minister exactly where I'm at right now. So how I got here was essentially um, I was introduced to the idea of applying for this position uh, by a man named Jerry Elder, actually. Uh, Many people may know him. And Jerry encouraged me to apply for this position. Um, I was attending church with him. I had not thought about this position because I was kind of keeping my eyes out for other ministry jobs, and I had not really considered the type of job that is here. When I came and I interviewed and I applied, and the more that I dug deep into the process of what was happening here at Church Street, it excited me. It gave me really an interesting idea of what could be in this position. And I have no idea what it could fully be. But what I did see was great potential for me to serve in the capacity of being the involvement minister and doing the things that needs to be done here. And, And that's exciting to me. I think that God has provided me with an opportunity to ride an interesting wave, and I'm going to do the best I can to ride that. Well, you know, anytime you do anything new in your life, there's a sense in which it's kind of scary because you've never been here before. At least Mm -hmm. that's how I am. Yeah. A little bit nervous, a little bit anxious, not knowing where this road might lead. But at the same time, you can't help but be excited about what might be over the next hill or on the horizon. And so I can tell you just as a coworker now, 
I don't know what the future looks like, but I'm very excited to explore that with you. Definitely. Uh, you never know what God has in plan. And, uh, I, but what I do see here seems to be very positive in nature. It's not something that I think is going to be bad. It's something that is exciting and, and anticipation, I think, is a good word. Uh, I'm anticipating what is to come. Well, we're all very excited. I know I speak not only for myself and the leadership here, but also for the congregation as we kind of turn a new page and look ahead to the future. And I hope anybody listening will want to be excited with us as well and come be a part. Thank you for being with me again today. Okay, once more, I'm joined by Russell Wyatt. And Russell, we've had a a great time having some discussion throughout this week together. We've talked a lot about your personal life, but now I'd like to turn things a little bit more to the spiritual side as both you and I are full-time ministers. We spend a lot of time reading and studying God's Word. So I'm just curious as one minister to another, what are some of your favorite Bible verses and why are they your favorites? It's a hard question because there are so many. And as we discussed earlier, you even you said, you know, you probably say this is my favorite verse almost every Sunday. But if I had to pick a few ones that stick out to me in, in my life and probably have shaped my faith in, in great ways is, uh, I think from the Old Testament, Psalm number 90 and verse 12, which is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the only Psalm written by Moses. Mm-hmm. And Moses writes an interesting thing there in verse 12, talking about the, I guess, fragility of man or the short-livedness of him. He says, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And I mean, I could write sermons on that topic right there. The idea of, of knowing that we are finite, knowing that uh, we only live a certain amount of time in this world, that is a key to wisdom, I think, in a lot of things. People, especially young people, and I, I consider myself one of them, uh, who live like there's no tomorrow, don't really appreciate everything that is coming each and every day. And that has always helped me to kind of help keep things in perspective as well. So I love Psalm 90:12, and I could probably wax poetic about it for quite some time, but I'll, <laughs> I'll move on. Uh, I, I think other verses that have been really impactful in my life and ministry, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, learning from the master teacher himself and the wonderful wisdom and practicality of his teaching, I think has always been inspiring to me. And it's something that, you know, the more that you dig in, you realize how deep it really goes. I never feel like I fully understand everything, even though I feel confident. Like it's always like every time I come back again, there's something more. It's like, oh, I didn't know that last Mm -hmm. time. There's something more. There's some little tidbit of wisdom or another way of looking at a verse like, what does it mean to go into my room and to pray? And why? Why did he say that? You know, mm-hmm. I, I could think of the, the basic reasons. You know, you don't want to be a showman and try to exalt your faith above others or be like the Pharisees who stand on the street corners. Yes. But then, you know, what does that mean for my spiritual life and my relationship with God as well? And you can take it in a lot of different ways, I think, to increase your faith. I think another couple of scriptures that really uh, impacted my faith in life was Romans chapter 5 and 6. They really helped my understanding of salvation and particularly baptism in Romans chapter 6, what it is and the illustration that is given there about being baptized into the death of Christ. Um, That really impacted my faith. And then finally, I would take you to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, there's a a small section there toward the end of the chapter, starting in verse 6, where Paul is talking about receiving good information from Timothy about the faith and love of 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 the Thessalonica church there and how they loved uh, Paul greatly. And Paul says in verse 8, he says, For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. And the way I was explained to me was that real living, it's, it's really living when you know that the people that you're working with are standing fast in the faith of the Lord. And I love that as a minister. It's, it's similar to, you know, what Jesus said about, I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes. It seems that Paul there is hitting on, this is not just an existence. This is real living when you live in the faith. Amen. So thank you, Russell, for sharing that with us. And thank you for being with me again today. Okay, Russell, it's good to have you back with me again. It's been a great week that we've spent together just talking about your life and talking about what God is busy doing in life and talking about the scriptures. And that's where I'd like for us to conclude this time together is by going back to the scriptures. Last time we were together yesterday, you were talking about some of your favorite scriptures. 
But I know that since that time, we've talked about another passage that comes to the forefront. And I'd like to start there, just read the passage together and then make some comments in our last time together today. Sure. We're going to be reading in Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 14. And it reads, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with the might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That is one of my favorite verses, I think, when I think about ministry in particular. And one of the reasons I absolutely love this verse is because you see into the motive behind Paul and his prayer life. He says, this is the reason that I bow my knees to the Father. I bow my knees to the Father. I pray for you. I earnestly care for you. And I want you to understand the riches and depth of Christ and his love. And I think as ministers, you know, we get to benefit from studying God's word on the regular. But when we see it affecting people's lives, when we see how it changes hearts and people have those understanding moments where the light bulb clicks on, that it is extremely rewarding and it keeps me coming back again and again and again in prayer to God. You know, that's one of the fascinating things about ministry is because in reality, Russell, you and I both are just fellow Christians on a journey together, striving to be like God, just like every person who's striving to live the Christian life is also doing. But we get the privilege of having maybe time to to study and to think and to read some things that maybe others don't always have the time to do. And so what a great responsibility it is, what a great honor it is to be in that position where we can share God's Word with other people. Yeah, and, and I take that responsibility very seriously, personally. I mean, I know you do too. I'm just saying that when, when I'm given the responsibility to have the privilege of the time of studying, something should come of that. Mm-hmm. You know, something should come. I've always heard about mm-hmm. preaching and teaching from the overflow, that idea of like what has blessed me and my cup overflow should overflow and fill your cup, that idea. And I really like that idea because... Everything that I teach is something that I have cherished in my learning of of God and his word. And and I grow in my faith, and I hope that people are growing because I'm growing. Well, this has been a a great week that we've spent together, Russell, and and it's good for me personally to get to know you at a little bit different level than we had gotten to know each other previously. And I hope that all of our listeners who've been with us all week have not only learned your name and learned your position now at the Church Street Congregation as our involvement minister, but also know something about you. Is there anything final you'd like to say? I look forward to getting to know you in the community and love you. All right. Thank you very much. That'll do it for our time together today. This has been Upreach, a presentation of the Church Street Church of Christ in Lewisburg, Tennessee. I am Kyle Bolton, the pulpit minister at Church Street, And I would like to personally invite you to come and share times of Bible study and worship with us each week. We meet every Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. for our morning worship, followed by our Sunday school for all ages at 10.15 a.m. Then we meet again at 6 o'clock p.m. for our evening worship. We also have a midweek meeting for devotion and Bible study on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. I hope to see you there. Have a blessed day.